yo, yo, yo. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you guys came back. So we see everyone wants to do push-ups. You're at home. How do you do push-ups? You know, a lot of times people just do them on their knees. And that's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to start from the knees if, if you could control the facts. If you control where it is you're doing push-ups and, and how you're doing it, then don't do them on your knees. If you're in like a group X class, which means you're, like you're at the gym and there's 30 people in class and there's really nowhere to elevate up, then you're going to do them on your knees, right? You, there's no way around it. But if you have control over the, the way you can do it and how safe you can do it, then let me show you a couple variations that you can do uh, at your own house, okay? So you with me? Come on over here. So first things first is that uh, our best thing that we always like, I'm gonna come, you can come with me this way. Come with me this way, take a walk. So the first things first, the best thing that I would say is if you do have an at-home gym, Right? Say you do. Say you have some equipment and your husband or, you know, I don't know what has to be your husband, right? Because they're the one that has squat racks. Or nowadays you have your own squat rack, but you still have trouble doing push ups because you could do squats. Find a bar, elevate it up, put it here, and then from here, you always want to get the, the main three, right? Squeeze your glutes, rib cage down, elbows nice and tight. So top three. That's it. Three cues. Squeeze your glutes, rib cage down, elbows nice and tight. That's it. Again, so I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, right? Rib cage down, packed. Elbows nice and tight, push away. So now, I'm getting my whole body, and I can get repetitive reps. Don't ever turn around while doing that though, because now I just look like a stripper. When I took, I'm just kidding, that's terrible. So, so here is the push-up variation that would probably be the most efficient, because now you can lower it, you can make it higher. So if you do have one of these bad boys, good for you. You found a good way to do elevated push -ups. Okay, for this variation, I'm gonna use a bench. Now, you don't. this doesn't have to necessarily be a, a bench, right? Like, this is a, an actual bench from the gym because I have gym equipment. I do own a gym and a facility, but for the most part, I would like to use this as either a chair or you could use this as your couch where you sit. So where you usually sit on your couch, right? Sit on down, watch some Netflix or play some Nintendo Switch, maybe some Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, anyone? No? Well, this is where you'd sit, right? So that's kind of where I would do my push-ups or start from. So from here, I'll start from my knees. I'll plant my hands down on the cushion or take the cushions off depending on your, your, your ability to do so. And now I'm just going to elevate up top. Now again, number three, right? Top three, squeeze your glutes, rib cage down, elbows nice and tight. Down, push, down, push. Little harder, then elevate it up, up, and down. I gotta stay down here because my camera doesn't point that way and I don't have friends. Honestly, I think my new favorite way is on the stairs. Right? Everyone got scared, you gotta have some stairs. If not, then the couch is, is the most optimal. But I think the stairs has so many different angles and levels that it's actually just as good as a squat rack. And the number one thing is the head position. So the big faulty that I see with uh, push-ups, especially in females, is that when they come down, their elbows are going to drop down and their head drops down as well. And that's just bad mechanics. And you see, you'll watch it all day on Instagram, especially when there's some type of challenge where someone tags you and challenges you to do so, right? So for here, I'm gonna use the stairs. And I'll give you a different angle, but right now I'm just gonna talk it through the fence. So this is the zoo. This is what it feels like, I guess. This is a belt, weight belt. You don't need that. This is a skateboard. Um, you don't need that in the way either. So I'll just move those out of the way. So we're gonna use the stairwell. Okay, now the, the less experienced you are, the higher you want to be. The more experienced you are, the lower you want to be. Obviously, if you're really experienced, you'll do them on the floor. But, you know, I don't like to not say that I don't do elevated push-ups because sometimes for a warm-up, I'll do elevated push-ups. And I can do a lot of push-ups, but sometimes it's just to, to start the engine, a good way to really engage the core first, squeeze the glutes, get the right mechanics down, and then I can move into the push-ups. So from here, I'm gonna put my hands, if you could see me through the, uh, probably not, but if you can, I hope so. You're gonna put your hands onto the stair. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Glutes, ribs, elbows, right? Glutes, ribs, elbows. Bang. Elbows tight, push away. Go control, push away. What I like the most about the stairwell is that I have to keep my head up, right? I have to keep my, my face up. Otherwise, I'm gonna bang my head into the stair. So if I drop my head, bunk. Bunk. And you don't want that to do that. So this actually teaches you 
proper mechanics than it would on the couch or on the, the squat rack. And using the step, I think is really effective. I think it's the, probably the best way to teach a push-up, and I never thought about it until this quarantine. Until we were locked in the house, I was like, oh man, I look at the stairs. I was doing some warm-ups, and I was like, wow, I do step-ups here, but now I can actually do push-ups. So elbows in, right? Glutes, rib cage, elbows. Nice and tight, push away. Nice and tight, push away. It's that simple. Now, if you feel a little bit more experienced, you feel good, better, you feel gooder, if that's a word. Same thing. Remember, now what's gonna happen is as you go down lower, you're gonna do the peak butt. You're gonna do that. You don't wanna be there. Again, glutes, ribs, elbows. Down, push. Down, push. Now, the hands may have some you know, issues depending on you know, how much wrist strength you have. A lot of people like to bend the wrist as much as they can. You wanna try to keep those, them straight. Okay, on the floor, yeah, we have no way to do it, so we have to do a lot of flexion there in the hands. But if you could hold something, especially in the beginning phases of your push-ups, keeping the wrist strong rather than a bent joint. Whenever there's a bent joint, there's weakness. So it's gonna have to go to the next joint, which is gonna be the elbow or the fingers, right? But if you have control over the fact of how to build your strength, then try to keep some of those joints straighter to really build the strength, especially in the wrist for females, until you start getting stronger. And then when you do so, then maybe move and try different angles where the wrists are bent and whatnot. So with that said, and a recap of how to do the push-ups and the different ways you can, pretty much there's different things that you could find. Just one thing, make sure it's sturdy. Make sure you're not on a chair that's gonna collapse. Make sure you're not on a countertop or somewhere that you're going to um, break something. Make sure you're not on a box that's going to move and slide. Okay, so safety is number one, right? Now number two, form. So anything that you elevate it on, whether it is the bench, the squat rack, the stairs, the couch, I don't know, once you, maybe you're gonna get really creative in doing it. Three, glutes, rib cage, elbows, okay? And then if you wanna add four, your head, right? Head position, but I think once you have elbows, you're gonna get good position there. So squeeze your glutes, rib cage down. When I say rib cage down, that means I wanna kinda of hold the plank, right? Plank, elbows, keep them tight, don't let them flare out. And we'll add the head, so let's go Fantastic Four. We'll call it Fantastic Four instead of top three. The Fantastic Four for push-ups. Oh, we just did it. Glutes, rib cage, elbows, head. Amazing, we just did it today. Amazing. And build the strength. Take your time. Number three, recap, take your time. Okay, you don't gotta go to failure. Do a couple, a couple to where you feel confident. And then do them throughout the day. You know, just like a pull-up. People mistake pull-up and push-up and they think one is easier. One is definitely easier than the other. But the way you build up the pull-up is by doing a couple of them frequently throughout the day, throughout the week, and not really going to a failure point. That's how you build what we call like the, the farm man strength, right? Just sub-max effort and just getting in rather than trying to fail every time. Now, if you are experienced, and yeah, of course, you could go to a failure or a max um, on the push-up or pull, but for someone that's just beginning, someone that's kind of starting, well then why don't you take it down a level and really build your strength and take the time and have the patience to build your push-ups, pull-ups, squats, sit-ups, anything uh, that you could do at your house. You know, it's just like running. And running, I'm not gonna go out and try to do run a marathon. There's no way, you know, for, I'm not gonna do it anyway. But even if I want to try to run a mile, I'm not gonna do it, right? I'm gonna take a couple, maybe a couple minutes of a run and then I'll walk or even just one lap and then I'll walk. So until it becomes that mile. So my biggest tip to you guys is again, follow what I said as a recap, but number one, just have patience and take your time. All right, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment, um, share this, and subscribe. I think that's always the best thing you can do. Why? Because then you get notifications, then I could know you every single day, well not every day, three times a week, and uh, I can be annoying to you, and you'll, uh, you can listen to this guy if you want. All right, so hopefully that helped. Um, thank you guys again for coming out whenever you can pop on in and check out a video uh, because what else are we gonna do in this quarantine? So, I'll see you guys later. It's Pete from PeteIsons.com. Peace out, guys.